Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we've got an Adobe Animate lesson where we're going to make straight line motion tween. And what we're doing in this lesson, we're going to take our bullet train from the Animate drawing lesson. We're actually going to make a move. We're going to make it speed past Mount Fuji in Japan. And we'll also show you uh, how you can make a car driving through the city and how you can make these really cool looking buildings uh, the car the palm trees and all of that so it's a big big lesson and so we suggest that uh, we're going to do this making a motion tween on the timeline so the new thing we're learning here is motion tween we learned how to draw things and now we're going to learn how to make them move and the simplest movement is in a straight line so it's pretty essential you've done that bullet train drawing lesson uh, including that car in the city challenge task so you've got the drawings already made uh, before you complete this lesson all right and we'll be making the bullet train first we'll just be taking our drawing from the previous lesson and making the bullet train move then we'll show you a live demo of how to do that in adobe animate so you can look at the timeline index in the video and you might want to just jump to the live demo if you want to that's fine and then after we've done that live demo we'll come back to showing you how you can draw these really cool looking buildings uh, and have the car driving through the city and then at the end we'll show you how you can add some trees along the side of the road as well just to make it a little bit more scenic should you want to all right so i'm a slow talker so remember to go to that youtube tools cog and go to play speed and set it to 1.5 1.75 or maybe even two for double speed if that works for you but it'll certainly flow a lot better if you make the video faster as we said it's going to be a long lesson because we've got to get that bullet train speeding past mount fuji and we're going to make a car going through the city so there'll be a timeline index in the video so you can stop at some point if you need to um take a break and then anytime you want to come back all you have to do is remember oh yeah i got up to here go to the next number on the timeline index just click that and youtube will take you straight to that point in the video all right, the learning objectives of this lesson are, it is a great first uh, lesson on making things move. We're gonna create a 24 frames per second motion tween for the car and use hold down CTRL and press enter to make it move, make it play as a movie. Um, we're gonna how to, we can copy non-moving static layers to frame 24 using insert timeline keyframe. So we'll show you that. How to export the finished train as an animated GIF so you can send it to your friends or you can post it onto the web. Web. and we'll also show you how to make an mp4 movie although you probably don't need that for this animation but for more sophisticated animate projects you do need to make them into an mp4 rather than a animated gif uh, how to use the stroke outline when we draw those buildings for the car going through the city and how to make an object drawing gradient uh gradient windows for those buildings and control c control v and the arrow to tool to move i'm also holding down alt to make copies of things when object drawing is off so we're going to have object drawing on some of the time object drawing off some of the time we can draw our car body just by drawing uh, some lines and then we can use the paint bucket tool to fill in those areas on the car the windows we can make kind of tinted windows and the rest of the car we can make it a nice gradient color rather than being at all just uh one plain color uh then we'll make a wheel for the car with object drawing mode on so there's a graphic and then we can uh, actually just uh, copy that easily to make the second wheel and that way both wheels will be the exact same size and how to make the car intro uh into a movie clip and slow down the output animation if we need to and a challenge task of adding a second vehicle going the other way so we've got two cars going and that's going to be it it's going to be a big lesson all right so the lesson downloads you can get go to the description uh of the video and you'll see a link there to get downloads so you can get if you haven't finished the bullet train lesson completely, even if you haven't done it, I guess, you can get this uh, motion start file. So this start file will have all the drawing of the Mount Fuji Japan in it, plus the bullet train. And then you can do the lesson just using that if you have not done the bullet train lesson. There's also a PDF document of these step-by-step -step instructions. A lot of students we have find it easier just to... Uh, read the pdf and try to do it that way get that from the downloads and then if they have problems they just look at the video index timeline and go to that section in the video uh, to work it out 
Uh, and we've also got animated GIFs in the downloads that show you uh, what the finished animation should look like. Okay, so you can play that GIF and you can see what the finished one should look like. All right, so we need to open up the start FLA file from the downloads or use your bullet train drawing, which you did previously. And here we are. And we've got all of the layers down here and we've got the train here on layer one. We need to click on layer one where the train is and do window tab and tick library. And then you can see that the library in that lesson or in the download start file, if you've got that, it was saved into the library and we can see our train sitting there in the library, okay? So that was something we do. Now, click to select the train layer. So we're gonna be working on the train layer. All of the other layers, you need to have padlocks on them. Just click in here in this position so they've all got a padlock on them so we don't accidentally move things around in the background layers. And we need to have no padlock on here and have the train one click. That's the active one we're gonna work on. All right, now change the screen size down to 50%. That's kind of up around the top right hand corner of Animate. You can go here and you can either, either type it directly in the box or use the drop down list of sizes. But we need to get it down to 50% because we're going to uh, push down the mouse on our train and move it here actually off the screen because we want to make a continual animation like you saw at the start of the video where the train comes in and then it disappears out the other side. And because the animation's looping uh, like an animated GIF does, it just keeps going and going. We see the same thing where the train's driving left to right. Okay, now click on the insert tab and create motion tween. Now what that should do is that you should now on your train layer have a dot here where the train is in the before position and your blue scroller bar should have moved up to frame 24. Animate should have done that automatically. Uh, now I've said frame 25 there, it should be 24. Uh, we might just go back and fix that right now. Sorry about that, otherwise I'd forget to fix it later on. All right, so it's there before. Now, your blue scroller bar should move to frame 24, just here, just before 25. And you should see that it's telling you if uh, that it is at frame 24. If your blue scroll bar is still back here for some reason, I don't know why this happened, but it did happen to some of our students, just push down on the mouse and drag it and make sure it's right up here at the end in frame 24. And what we're gonna do now is show where we want the train to be at the end. So you push down on the train to grab it and carefully move it right up the other side. So at frame one, we want it here. And at the end of the animation, we want it there. But you will notice that our stage area has gone white. We've lost all of our background, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that up next. All right, so a line should appear with dots on it. When you let go of the train after you've moved it here, you'll have a line with dots on it, a straight line, and that's showing where Flash has done all the in-betweening parts for you. So that's why it's called a motion tween. Animate has made all of these in between pictures of the train and put them along here. And you don't have to do that. You only have to show it the before and after and it does all the in-betweening. That's what's so great about Animate. Sorry if I keep mentioning Flash. Flash was the old name for Animate. All right, and if you press that play button that's on the timeline, you should see your train uh, driving across the page. All right, so the reason why the background items only flash briefly at the start and then the screen goes all white is because all of them are just in frame one and they're not going for the whole animation for the rest of the frames that are playing up here to number 24 where the animation uh, ends. Now we can do this in Animate by making a keyframe. We don't have to, some students thought we had to uh, copy, copy, copy and have dots all the way across. You don't. You just have to have, uh, when you've got a motion tween happening, all you need is to take the this one and just copy it to the end. Just have one copy and that will work okay. So what you do is we're gonna start with the grass here, the bottom layer, and you just click in its box at 24, so it goes blue. So you should have a blue box lining up with grass and up the top here it should tell you you're in frame 24 and you should be able to see that from this line it's made. And then uh, that means that frame 24 is active. Okay, so now we just right click uh, and 
to insert timeline keyframe, all right? Uh, now, you can also uh, just right click and go, and a different menu will come up and you can do insert keyframe. But while you clicked on that blue box, another way is to just go up the top and go insert timeline keyframe. And what should happen now is that it's copied to the end. And if you drag this scroller across to move or play a video, see that the grass is now lasting for the whole video. So all we need to do is repeat that same step for all of these other parts of the background layer, just going and clicking in frame 24 and doing insert timeline keyframe. All right, so make sure, of course, you don't do the train layer because that's a motion tween. But we just clicked in each of these boxes one by one and did insert timeline keyframe and copied them to the end. Now you can uh, push your mouse down on this blue scroll bar and then with the mouse button held down, you can just move it left and right and that should scroll through the animation step by step so you can quickly see what's happening in what frame if you want to. Now, if you press the play button, you should have the background there the whole time and have the train moving across. So I think we're just about done. All we need to do now is you can generate a continuous movie uh, with the HTML5 browser uh, option. So how you do that is you hold down the CTRL key in the bottom left hand corner of your keyboard and then while that's held down of your left finger, just press the enter button on the keyboard. And then what should happen is uh, after a short moment, if you look in your internet browser, probably Google Chrome, uh, it should have a movie playing in there. And we'll show you that later in the live demo. But you do have to be connected to the internet uh, to do this, all right? Yeah, uh, nothing will happen if you're not connected to the internet. Uh, and what should happen is in your browser, you should see a bullet train sort of come into picture, come further along and see it go out the other side. So we've just tried to take little snapshots here of the animation while it was running. And <clears throat> if you use Windows File Explorer to check the folder where you've been saving your project to, uh, bullet train motion v1, we just did a file save as in animate and saved it. You can see what's happened is it's generated that HTML page that runs in your browser. Now my default's Microsoft Edge, yours might have a Chrome symbol and show Chrome. That's fine. It's made a JavaScript file which uh, plays the movie, all right? And so uh, after you've done that too, when you press control enter, if you come back to animate, it'll be in output mode here and it's just telling you what happened while it was generating that movie. Now, if you've just got some warnings like this, it's fine. Uh, if it says errors, uh, well, then it's a problem and you need to fix that up, okay? Uh, so it's on output mode at the moment. Now, we've done the movie, we've checked it's working. We didn't have any errors, we just got warnings, so that's fine. You need to click on this one here, the timeline tab now to get your timeline back. So some of our students, they press CTRL and enter, they run it in their browser, that's fine. They close the browser window, they come back to animate and they're going, where's my timeline gone? I've sort of got these warnings and stuff, something's gone wrong. Uh, that's fine, the timeline's still there, you just need to click onto the timeline tab to bring it back. Now, our bullet train goes pretty fast at 24 frames per second, as you'll see in the demonstration, uh, the live demo, which we're getting around to doing soon. Uh, to slow it down, you can uh, click on the top of screen, the window tab, and then click properties to get the properties panel up. Uh, or you can do modify tab and document uh, to get the same sort of thing up. You need to find where it says FPS, the frames per second. And at the moment, the standard sort of animate one when you start a new project is 24, uh, but we can change that. If we change it to 12, it'll only go half as fast. And we'll show you that in the live demo. So you change this to 12, and then when you do control and enter to generate your movie, it'll be going a bit slow. Give our passengers time to take a photo of the beautiful Mount Fuji. Uh, that's what the real Mount Fuji looks like. That's what our interpretation looks like. Uh, we were gonna put cherry blossom in, but that was kind of gonna be a lot of drawing and a lot of fiddling around. Uh, so we didn't wanna do that in the lesson. We just kept it a bit simpler. All right, so I think we're ready to do the live demo in Adobe Animate. So if you want to, you can uh, just press the pause button on the video or you can take a break and come back later and find in the timeline where we do bullet train live demo and just come back and click the number on that and YouTube will take you straight back to this point in the video.
Okay, so here we are over in Adobe Animate uh, CC. This is 2021 and we've loaded up the start file here and you can see we've got our train, our train track and our clouds. But if we hold down CTRL and do enter, it's going to open up in our web browser soon. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Nice and slow by the looks of it. Come on. It should show a picture here. Uh, of the train. Let's hope it works later on. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back to scene one. What's this little, okay, scene one. All right, so on our, we need to go back here. Here's output, here's timeline. All right, so just forget we did that. All right, so remember, as in the video, our, we need to go drop down to 50% up here in the top right hand corner. All right, we need all those layers padlocked. That's already done for us here. And we're going to take our train and we've got to try to keep it straight so it's on the track too. And animate's kind of good because it gives us these guidelines to help us. All right, so at the start of the video, we want our train here just out of sight on the left and not in the picture yet. And then while we're clicked on this train layer in frame one, we just go insert and create motion tween, all right? That's made our motion tween. If you look at time layer here for the train, in the timeline, it's got it sort of this green color, very like duck egg green, I suppose. And our scroller is over here at number 24. So this is showing where we're gonna finish our animation. So we need to carefully drag our train across and just have it off the screen. And then when you let go of your mouse, we push down the mouse button and held it to drag it across. When we are uh, just let go of the mouse button. You can see it's put in the line here where it's gonna move. And if we press the play button here down in the timeline, what's happening is our train is driving across the screen. So that's fabulous. Uh, now, the only thing is that we just see the mountains at the start and then we don't see them. So here at frame 24, uh, we need to go right down to the bottom to the grass layer click here in the grass layer and you can see we are at frame 24 and right click and go insert keyframe okay and then we just need to copy the sky all the way to the end so click in frame 24 for the sky down here and we'll do it the other way this time you can go insert timeline keyframe all right that does the job as well so it's either right click insert keyframe i hope i'm not confusing you too much or you can click in frame 24 for that layer and go insert timeline keyframe. The main thing is you want to get a keyframe. And what a keyframe is, you can just think of it as a copy of what was in frame one here. In frame one, we've got those clouds. Okay, but if you go to frame 24, no clouds. So we need to right click and insert keyframe. Then it just copies the uh, clouds over to here. We need to copy the train track insert keyframe, but we don't need to do the train. And if you push down on this blue bar scroller now, you can see that the background is lasting the whole time and our train is going in a straight line. And if we press the play button here, we can see this is what happens. Our train goes across, so that looks really good. I'm just gonna check the speed this is at because I think I was playing around with it before. You can go modify document. Oh, it's at 24 frames per second, all right. Uh, another way is you can just be clicked in this gray area here outside of animate and go window properties and I'll show the properties are for the background project and see that's FPS 24 there. All right. So it definitely looks like we're at 24 frames per second. Now let's try that hold down control and enter and I've just figured out why it isn't working. <laughs> it's because I'm not connected to the internet. So I'll just fix that and I'll be straight back. Okay, we do now have an internet connection. So if we hold down CTRL key down the bottom left hand corner and press our enter key, it should go to our browser and this time we won't see a blank screen. Uh, it'll take a minute, there's our train, okay? And it's zooming past, it's a bullet train, so it goes really fast and it's going past Mount Fuji in Japan. So that is A1 fantastic. Now it's going a bit too fast for the people to take photos of Mount Fuji because everyone wants a photo of Mount Fuji. So let's just go back to our timeline here and we'll just do modify and document, do it this way. Uh, see how it's 24 here, we'll just make it 12, all right? And then 
we've got that. And again, if you just clicked in this gray area, you can go window properties and we'll see that it's FPS is 12 there as well. So we're definitely on 12 frames per second. If we hold down CTRL and go enter, our train should go at half the speed it used to be for. So that's nice. The driver's slowed down. Everyone get a picture of Mount Fuji. Uh, at this time of year, the cherry blossom doesn't seem to be out, but springtime would be great. All right, so that's kind of the first bit of the video done, how to make a motion tween. And if that's all you needed to know, well, then you don't need to watch this part two. Part two is where we learn how to make those really nice looking buildings and do the car. All right, just before we make the car, uh, as well as going control enter to make that movie, you can generate an animated GIF, uh, which you could then post to the internet or email to your friend and they could have a look at your project without them having to have Adobe Animate at all. So uh, you click on the file tab and you go to export and you need to choose export animated GIF. And then I'll bring up this screen. Now there's nothing you really need to change on this at all. Uh, just make sure transparency is not ticked for this because we want to see the background. We don't want it to be see-through transparent. So make sure that's not ticked. Uh, everything else should be okay. And you can click here and preview it. And so you can see what the finished GIF is going to look like. So I suggest you always do that actually. Just give it a quick preview. It uh, runs pretty quickly and opens up the browser and shows you. And then you just can click the save button and save it as a GIF. What will happen is the usual kind of windows uh, window will open up and you can navigate to where you want to save it to. Give it a name. We've just called it Bullet Train GIF just so we can spot it easily amongst all the other files. Uh, and it's going to be a GIF image and you do save. And what will happen then is that you should see if you go to just normal good old Windows Explorer uh, and check out where you saved it to, you'll have an image here called Bullet Train GIF. And if you double click that, it will have your uh, train moving across, all right? Just like I put that animated GIF, actually, that's how I showed you the train moving at the very start of this lesson. All right, you can also generate a movie file. For more complex animations that we do later in the course, you do have to do a movie file or you don't get all the animate features in the finished product. But for things like the one we're doing today and exported GIF animated GIF is fine. But if you want to make a video, because you can load it up to YouTube is another thing. So you want this H2 puts point H.264 is a technical thing for just an MP4 movie. So you go File, Export, Export Video Media this time. And what will happen is this window will pop up and the format to use is H.264. That's normal MP4. Now, if you use default AME, you just get a nice small sized MP4 that you could email to someone. But you can drop down here and get a format suitable for YouTube. If you had your animation, you want to turn it into an MP4 and upload it to your YouTube uh, channel to show people. And then once that's done, you click export and then it's a little bit more involved than the animated GIF. It'll look like nothing's happening at all, like your computer's just stopped. But then after a while, after, I don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you should see Adobe Media Encoder load up. All right, if it doesn't load up, maybe you need to go to your Adobe Creative Collection and add it to your apps and download it and install it. But anyway, this should come up and it should show up here that it's making your movie at the moment. And when the movie's finished, you should get a tick here. All right, and then the media encoder is finished and you can go back to animate. So when that green tick finishes, then you can click the X and shut down ME. Okay, the media encoder. But we found that when we do that, we seem to always get this error message. Sorry, an error occurred, you know, send report. So we just click don't send and uh, ME just closes down, animate's still running, our movie got made and everything is fine. Uh, so if you go to your Windows folder, the MP4 is there, so you can click yellow car V5 MP4. And if Windows is your default player for MP4s, you should see it play and it'll only play once. So if you want it repeating, you click these three dots here that are on the Windows Media Player and then you can tick repeat and then it'll keep playing the movie over and over uh, just like as if it was a, a GIF, an animated GIF, all right? So that's how you can make a movie version of your Animate project as well. 
all right so part two on to part two so that's how you do the uh exports so we've actually learned four different exports now we maybe might make a quick little video on that one day that if you just got a still picture like when we first draw drew the bullet train you export as an image and make it png because that's highest quality if you've got a simple thing moving like a motion tween like we've got on this project you can just do file export animated gif if you've got a big long animation or it's got complicated adobe animate features in it then you need to do file export and export as an mp4 video but anyway on to part two making the car animation so uh in the previous bullet train lesson actually set you a challenge task of trying to draw a car driving through the city and this is some of the ones which our students made so we had the batmobile here uh, which was pretty nice we've got a truck just driving through the city here uh, a cute little car going through the city uh, a triangle car so we can draw triangles in animate as well some triangular buildings and things here that's kind of nice looking a rainbow car driving through a pastel colored city and this one here uh, the student who did this this was amazing like she put all these different blocks in with different gradients to kind of spell out freakville welcome to freakville and then sort of had this rainbow pastel car with the back wheels sort of all funny but um yeah it's up to you you don't have to do the one we're making here if you want to do a bus or a truck that's fine you don't have to do the one we're doing all right now this is the one we're going to guide you through making uh, we're mainly going to show you how to make this gradient sky and the buildings and the windows and how to draw lines to make a car and then color the car in as a gradient because it'll look much better and to make these uh, wheels for the car as well all right so making the buildings uh we've made so far we've got this and this should be easy to make because this is what we made for the bullet train so go back to the bullet train lesson we just need some grass that's a gradient we just had it as a left to right gradient the road we've just made gray going into black uh just as a rectangle with the rectangle tool we've made the sky a rectangle but we uh, used the transform tool to spin it around so we've got the light blue at this end and the dark blue at the top end all right so you can learn how to do all of that in the bullet train drawing lesson so that's why we told you to do that lesson before this one now how do we get these white lines here and how do we get them all exactly the same size we're so skillful no we all we just uh got on the rectangle tool and made it white with uh the pencil no color and we zoomed in so we could draw a little skinny rectangle like that and then after we made our first one we just got on the arrow tool and held down the alt key remember we spoke about that in the drawing lesson for the bullet train and you hold down alt and you can just drag and let go and copy that one push down alt drag and copy drag and copy so these are all just copies of the other one and if you use alt you'll be able to line them up exactly as you go as well so that's how we get the the dashed lines across the road all right so uh, what are we doing now it says did the right lines okay so we're talking about the rectangle tool and object drawing uh, we want to set to on for what we're going to do next and we're getting on okay we're going to start making some buildings so I'll show you how we make buildings because this is all done and we need the buildings all right now I know what we're doing uh, so we're going to get on the rectangle tool and we're going to set pencil stroke a black color and we're going to set it about size three okay and then we've got a gradient fill here all right so uh, get on the rectangle tool make sure object drawing is turned on so you need to click that so it's got the gray light gray box around it and then to get this uh, gradient color we've just gone onto the fill and then we've done window tab up the top and color and we've picked linear gradient instead of solid here so I use this drop down arrow here to get linear gradient then we're just setting it that it's going to go from orange to red they're the two colors and it should look like this when we draw it the rectangle so we can drag out was this rectangle here and when we drag it out see it's got this black three point thick line around it and on this one we just made it kind of a different orange going to a deep red now this one here to get this kind of big popping out almost cylinder sort of thing happening we just clicked in here we made this one purple and this one the same purple and and push down and drag them to these positions on linear gradient then if you double click here you can make a new uh, color box and that color box we've just made a really light blue 
And then we've double clicked here and made another color blocks that is light blue. And the effect was that when we drew the rectangle, uh, we got this effect, which was pretty good. And here we've just made sort of light gray going across to dark gray. And then we use the free transform tool to spin it around. So that's how we got our four different uh, buildings. And now to do the windows. Uh, the windows, are, there's some presets here we can use for windows. One's a round gray radial gradient and the other one's a linear gray going to dark gray uh, rectangle type gradient. And these are great to use to give the effect of 3D tinted windows, all right? So let's show you how we draw the windows. We draw the windows as a rectangle, but here we've used a linear gradient. Now, once you've drawn one, you can hold down ALT and copy it across to make all of these others. Now we've got our first row of windows. Now, do we want to be drawing windows and ALT copying and doing all that every single window in the building separately? No, what you can do is you can hold down uh, the shift key. So if you hold down the shift key of your left hand and click on each of these windows, with shift held down the whole time so that they get a blue box around them and then take your finger off shift all right and move it to hold down the alt key right which is in the left hand corner right near the space bar on most uh, keyboards then you can drag and copy these all right and animate should set up guidelines as well and they'll stay in a straight line so we can just hold down the alt and copy them once copy them again copy them again so we can just do a whole row of windows at a time we'll show you that in the live demo and we keep repeat copying and what we did with these bottom ones was we held down our shift and clicked all six of them when we were finished and we just used our, our transform tool uh, to make them bigger, all right? So we just made all those bigger with this guy, the transform tool that lives very close to the arrow tool in Animate. So that's a quick way to get lots and lots of windows that all line up and look good. Okay, so here we've used a round gradient, but we changed the color to be blue on the inside. Uh, but yeah, we sort of made some, that's what happens if you use that radial preset. This is what happens if you use the rectangle preset we showed you. This one we had to make ourselves, all right? And so we've got our road lines and our buildings are finished on that layer. So padlock that layer. And so you need to, uh, of course, we had to do plus before we made the buildings. I don't know if we mentioned that. Uh, maybe that's missing from the steps. I might have to fix that up. Now you need to press plus here and make the car layer, okay? So padlock all the finished layers, click on their padlock, and then make a new layer by clicking that plus sign called car. Now click all the eye icons so that all of the layers except the car layer are hidden. So as well as padlocking, we're gonna just click in here, this position on all of them, and that turns the eye off so they're hidden. And that'll give us a kind of blank white canvas to work on for drawing our car without having all the buildings and things in the background, all right? So that's just a trick so we can get a blank white piece of paper to draw on. Now, in the lesson for the train, we showed how to use object drawing. So We've got to use object drawing off when we use the line tool to draw the body and windows of the car. But when we do the car windows, we've got to have object drawing turned on. So remember how to turn it on and off. If that indicator for object drawing, the circle inside the square, if there's no gray around it like this, it just kind of is a little guy, uh, that means object drawing mode is off. If you click on this, it should turn it on. You should see a light gray uh, square around it. So it's kind of a bigger sort of guy. I don't know why they don't make it a better color to see. In animate, they just should make it bright white or something. So it's really obvious. But that means object drawings turned on. So if a big guy is on, little guy is off. All right, and when you get onto the line tool, so when you're using the line tool, you click on the line tool, you go window tab and then properties. It also has it here where you can turn it on and off, all right? So it might not be down the bottom of the tools, uh, down the left-hand side. You might have to go here if you're using the line tool, into the line tools properties. And if you click, so it's got the gray all around it, then it's on. And if it doesn't have, if it has dark gray around it like this, then it's off, okay? So bit tricky, but once you know it, you'll be fine. Okay, now to use the line tool to draw lines to make the car, we're just gonna use a black stroke. So we're gonna make sure that's off, so it's got dark gray around it. 
and we're going to set that to black and set it to size three with this stroke size you can either drag that slider or just type in that box a three and then we're ready to go so we're just going to like draw a line here draw a line here and then draw a line here okay and you just keep drawing lines so then we go up for the windscreen across to here down here down here and we've got kind of the outline of the car body now we can just stay on the line tool and we can draw a line here and a line across there and then we've sort of got our windows and we keep drawing lines one by one making sure they connect up with our gaps so you need to maybe zoom in while you're doing this and check that you haven't got gaps all right, now you don't have to do it like this. You can do your own design, that's fine. And so we also drew a door in and a line for the handle and a couple of things here for headlights and rear tail lights. So that's kind of our finished car. It doesn't look great now, but it'll look much better when it's colored in. All right, so that's what we have to do. And make sure like we've got here that your lines definitely meet up. If you've got any sort of gaps between the lines, it's gonna be a problem when you go to color them in later on. Now to color them in, we use the paint bucket tool and down here, there's some options when you're on paint bucket tool and you need to make sure it's on closed large gaps or you can get on paint bucket tool and go to the window tab and do properties and on this guy, click it and make sure it's on closed large gaps. All right, what closed large gaps will do is if you've got any little gaps between those lines, animate will close them up for you so the paint won't spill out of the lines and go splatting all over the place. But what it does is it doesn't let you paint if the gaps are too big. Closing large gaps helps it. If the gaps are all closed, it is happy to fill in the paint uh, interior of the shape. Otherwise, it just won't fill it in. All right, so on the properties for the fill, uh, we're gonna do the windows first. And so we're just clicking on fill and this preset here will do the job for the windows. All right, we don't need to make our own. So just click on fill and click on this one. And then you just get your paint bucket and put the arrow that's on the paint bucket here and click it. And it should just fill in your window like that. And it's kind of nice and tinted, makes it look a bit 3D. That's great. Now to fill in the car, we're gonna set up this gradient that goes from yellow to orange. But we had a little bit of a problem when we were trying to set it up. Uh, it kept setting it up on the pencil instead of the paint bucket, which was a real problem, okay? So we want it set up on the paint bucket, not the pencil. So what you do if that happens is there's a little thing here, an icon that's got kind of arrows, swap arrows. And you need to click on that and that'll swap this gradient you've made here up onto the fill, which is where you want it. So it can be used with the paint bucket. At the moment, the paint bucket's doing a radial green fill. That's not what we want. We're trying to get this linear yellow to orange for our car. So we have to click this flipper and then this one will go up there. And also in your tools, when you're on the paint bucket now, you should see that this, which is a color that's gonna fill, is actually our linear gradient uh, from yellow to orange so we look pretty good and ready to go there and if you look in the properties uh window properties while you're on the paint bucket see it is now up here and that little flick has gone away all right so we're good to go and what you can do is you can just click in here and it fills in that bit click inside the door it fills in that so yellow going to orange the whole car it's gone yellow going to orange we've just clicked in there here we just made a red radial i think we use one of the presets and just clicked in there so we just changed the colors went on the fill color and i think down the bottom there's a in the color all those color blocks there's a pre-made one that kind of has glowing red inside black so we just use that uh, for the tail light so that's it the car's made and it's painted we've taken it to the paint shop and painted it and now we just need to get some wheels onto it now for the wheels we're just going to draw one wheel of the car and then copy it to make the second wheel that way the wheels will be the exact same size you need to push down on your rectangle tool to open up all the options and get onto the oval tool all right now on the oval tool you need to click down here to make sure that's kind of turned on that it's got that light gray box around it because we need object drawing turned on uh, for drawing the car wheel if you forget to turn it on what will happen is as you move your wheels around it might cut bits and pieces out of your car uh, so that'll be how you know you didn't get that right uh, but anyway if it's got the gray around it, it should be good to go and then window tab to get into the color uh, settings and for the color 
We of course want no pencil on this and we're going to use that pre-made uh, radial gradient that goes from white to black but this down arrow radial gradient set this one to white and this one to black. Now if you don't want these guys if you accidentally clicked here and made an extra one by the way you can just push down your mouse and grab it and just flick it away anywhere and then that's like trash canning it there isn't a trash can for it. Ah, uh, Now on the black one it'll usually be right up the end here you need to push down on it hold your mouse button down and just slide it to here because we want it to go to uh, here for making those wheels. All right, now if you drag out your oval tool, you can make your first wheel. You'll see it has a blue box around it because we were in object drawing mode and that's great. And what you can do now is to make the other wheel, uh, there's a couple of ways. You can either hold down the ALT key and just drag this one across and it'll make a copy of it. And animate should give you some guidelines to help you make them line up. Or if you're on a laptop that doesn't have a mouse or it's got a really horrible little mouse on it or something, uh, just go click on this and go control and then C for copy and then just control V and animate will randomly might paste your wheel up here, but you can get the arrow till and grab it and move it into position. All right. Uh, so that's that and our car's finished. Now we just need to turn all these bits and pieces. We've got lines here, we've got fills, we've got wheels. We want to join it all up into one object and that object needs to be a movie clip so that we'll be able to animate this car and make it move. So what you do is you get on the arrow tool and you actually hold down your mouse and keep your button held down and draw a square around it and that should make everything go dotty to show that everything's selected. Otherwise, the other way is to hold down shift, I think, and just click on each bit till they're all dotty. But <clears throat> that's kind of a long way. The best way is to just get on the arrow tool, draw a big rectangle around that area. Everything should go dotty, so it's all selected. Go up to the top tab, modify, convert to symbol. Uh, this panel will come up. The symbol you want is movie clip, so make sure that's on movie clip. And we're just going to call it yellow car and click OK. Registration should be in the center. Just make sure it is clicked in the center of that grid. Click OK and then we've got our car all joined up as one unit. So if you click on the library books icon or you go window tab, so there is, you might have this library books icon here. This one up here actually is properties, that's color to save you going window color. This one's library to save you going window library. But if they're not showing up, just do window library. You should see, be able to click on your library and see it. And see it has saved a copy of the car into the library, which is what happens whenever you make a uh, movie clip. And that's a symbol for movie clip, the sort of cog with the teeth on it. Ah, uh, now click the eye icons on all those layers that we were hiding to make them all visible again and your car's probably way too big because we had to draw it pretty big while we we're working on that white sheet but that's no problem you can just get onto that tool the free transform tool and you know pull these corners to make it smaller we even kind of stretched ours to make it look a bit longer because it was looking a bit boxy so it looks a bit better longer so that's good that kind of fits the size of the road so i've got our car there and then we just follow those same steps as the bullet train. Uh, we just need to drag this over so it's just off to the left. Then on the car layer, we right click and create motion tween. And then we drag it over to the other side here. And then we had to uh, copy, you know, all those other layers to frame 24. And then you press control enter and you should have a movie. Now, if you want to make some trees as well, if you want to take a break, actually, take a break. Uh, if you're not interested in trees, look at the description and look at the video timeline index and just jump straight to the live demo because this has been 44 minutes long already. But if you're watching in a faster speed, of course, it won't be that long. So take a break if you need to and then come back to where you want to go in the video. Alrighty, so making trees. Uh, make a new layer called trees and move that layer. So click the plus sign, make it trees, but then push down and hold that layer. Move it so it's underneath car. That way the uh, car can drive behind the tree. No, the car can drive in front of the trees. All right, the first, first lot of trees we make. Now, this time we're going to use the paintbrush tool. So get onto this paintbrush tool and do window tab and then properties. Uh, or click this properties icon and what we need for this is we need to have object drawing turned on 
and we're going to use a brown color here because we're doing the tree trunks first and we're going to set it to about size 10 all right so object drawing modes on brown and size 10 and what we can do then is we can draw the tree trunks over on this side of the road all right so we've just drawn all these tree trunks and because the tree layer is underneath the car one, the car will be able to drive in front of them late, later on. So anyway, I got tree trunks. Now to make those kind of funky palm tree leaves, we just use this preset down here. So we stayed on the paintbrush, make sure you're not clicked on any of these or they'll change to the green color. And we just change the fill color over to this one, this pre-made 3D one. And Remember, if you make mistakes at any time, you can use the eraser tool to rub out your painting. And we just drew the palm leaves on there. So you can see this is what it looks like when it's finished. We've got trees on this side of the road and we've done palm trees. If you want to draw squiggly apple trees, that's okay. And then you can actually use this red one here to make apples. You just do single clicks on them and you'll have apples everywhere if you want to do that. Uh, and what we also did was we made another layer called the near trees that was on top of car and we drew these other three trees here. Now, if you don't like having to draw all these trees, just a little trick is you can draw a rectangle around one of the trees you've made and right click and convert to symbol and save it into the library as a movie clip. And so then you'll have a tree ready made in your library and you can just drag it out and resize it uh, to make a second tree, all right? So if you had a lot of trees to make, just make a couple of different looking trees in the library and then you can just drag them out as many as you need onto your trees layer and you'll be done. All right, so these trees are movie clips. Now, yeah, you could, uh, when you right click convert to symbol, you could make them graphic as well. Uh, either way, it should work. They don't have to be movie clips. In fact, I suppose technically, since we're not gonna move them, uh, they shouldn't be movie clips and they should be graphics. But look, either way works uh, and you'll be fine. All right, so the car driving through the city is finished and you can do that file export and export it as a GIF. So let's just do, uh, we're not gonna build the whole car because we've been going for 47 minutes. We'll just show you some tips about drawing it uh, so you can see a few things in Animate. Okay, so this should look familiar. This is actually our old uh, bullet train picture. All right, so we're getting on the line tool and we're doing window properties here. And the stroke size, remember we needed was three. So we're just gonna go in that box and type a three. And we don't actually need the line tool yet because we're not going to draw the car yet, all right? So let's get on the rectangle tool. Sorry about that, rectangle tool first, window and properties. And we don't, we want the stroke to be black, size three, okay? And the fill color for this first building, uh, let's just go window color, all right, to bring up the color panel. And we're gonna use a linear gradient and we're gonna make it go from yellow to, let's make it go yellow to green just for something different. All right, so that's set up there. This one's black. For the pencil and all you do is while you're on your rectangle tool i don't know why is it showing a pencil the current layer train track ah of course we have to make a new layer so we need to click the plus sign make a new layer called buildings so yeah if you get that pencil and you can't do anything uh, that's animates way of telling you to click the plus sign and make a new layer all right so now we're on here and we should be able to build the uh do this first building. So, whoa, that's bright. Now, if we click this fill color here, uh, let's just make that yellow. No, we need to go to window and color. All right, so our next building, let's make it pink and it's going to um, kind of a purple color, orange to purple, that'll be interesting. So we just draw this building here next to that one. All right, so that's some buildings. Now let's look at doing windows. So on the rectangle tool, I'm just gonna use this color palette shortcut here to get into colors. And I want a linear gradient, but I wanna have, uh, let's just go to solid color, uh, linear gradient. All right, so what I'm gonna have is kind of a light gray here and a 
dark gray here. All right, and what will happen then is I'll draw my first window. So here's a window and so that they're both the same size, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this window. Let's zoom in a bit. Get the magnifying glass. Okay, so with the arrow tool, I'm clicking on the window, but I also need to click on these bits around the outside. So I'm going to hold down the shift key because I need to get the window frame like that. Plus, I need to get the inside. So if you have a good look there, you can see the outside frame and that is dotty. So I've got all of it. Uh, now I push down the ALT key and I can just copy this to here. All right. And make another one. Now, the reason why that happened was because I messed something up when I was doing the rectangles. And of course, naturally, I deliberately wanted to show you that. Uh, we didn't have the object drawing mode turned on is the problem. So that needed to be turned on. And then you see down the left hand side here, it's got the gray around it. Now, if object drawing mode is turned on, what it means is that when you draw a window, okay, clicking it, you can get the whole object at once and hold down ALT and copy it. All right, so that's the way it should have been done. So let's get these ones. Now we've got that first row of windows. Remember we were showing you, telling you in the video, you can hold down shift and click, 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 click. I'm keeping shift held down the whole time I'm doing that. So I've got all uh, five windows selected there. Then I can hold down the ALT key and I can move them as a group. All right, so that's how I can get lots of windows at once for my building. Now this one here, what I could do maybe to save myself from the mess I got myself in is I can right click and convert to symbol and make this a graphic called square window. All right, so now it's a graphic symbol and see how it moves all at once and it cuts a hole in everything. So that's going to be a problem too, because I didn't have object drawing mode turned on. It's going to cut holes in things. Uh, I could go to my library and I can get that square window and drag it out. And then when I move it, it doesn't uh, create holes. So yeah, it's a bit of a drama if you do not uh, set the object drawing mode on. Because remember, we've off. That's how you do cooking cutting when we did that emojis lesson. But anyway, let's just get that so we can see it all on the screen. That's sort of the basics of making the buildings. So now that they're made, we just padlock everything. And then these eyes here, click on all the eyes so that all the layers are hidden. There must be some grass there to hide as well. So they're all hidden at the moment. They haven't gone anywhere, but we've hidden them. And we're going to make a new layer now. And the new layer is called car. And we'll just show you very quickly how we can make a car, if I can spell it properly, how we do that with the line tool. All right. So here we are, clicked in frame one of car. Get on the line tool. Like we we're telling you with the properties, you need to have strokes set to about three. And you just start drawing your car. So I'm just going to do one line and then try and stay in the same position so it connects up. Another line. Another line here. I'm going to make a big long car. All right. So this is going to come like this and like this and like that. And then we need a window. So I'm going to put that in like that. Just draw a door and animate seems to be helping me there by putting that O telling me it's connecting. And maybe I have the door handle here. Okay, so that's kind of my car done. Maybe I'll also just go like this. So it's like that. All right, now we get on the paint bucket tool and need to choose a fill color and we want a gradient color. So we're going to go window color. 
and we're going to set up our gradient. So this car, I'm going to make it go from green. And then if I click this one here, I am clicked on it, but I want a yellow color. Ah, double clicking was being temperamental. So I want a yellow color. I think I've got a black one there as well, by the looks of it. Can't see that there. That's weird. I can't see the color picker there. Oh, it's doing all sorts of weird things. Okay, let's double click on that and try and make it yellow. All right, now we seem to be right. So if I paint bucket in these gaps, uh, they're not filling in. Okay, and that seems to be a problem. So what I might do is on my paint bucket tool, I'm going to go window and properties. And I'm going to make sure that paint bucket options, specific regions, this square one up here, I'm going to say close large gaps. Because I must have some gaps between uh, my things here. All right, and it's still not wanting to paint bucket fill. Okay, why not? Ah, because I had object drawing mode on. So classic example of what to do wrong. These are actually all objects because they got blue squares around them. Okay, so let's draw a blue rectangle around the whole thing and delete it. We might not have time to draw a proper car, but before we start using that line tool, control Z, object drawing modes down the bottom here are the tools. For goodness sakes, turn it off, Passy, so it's not on. Okay, all right, so let's just make a really quick car here. A box. It's gonna look more like a Martian spaceship than a car. All right, now I get on my paint bucket and I fill in and it's all working. Now, that windows there, I didn't really want them that color. Uh, so, uh, what I can do is I can ch 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 change that to this pre-made round one. Let's try that. All right, so we can have that. Uh, then I'm going to also get on the line tool here and just draw in sort of a rear light. So I've done that and then get on my paint bucket, uh, click on this color picker here and just make that this sort of 3D red pre-made and click in there. All right, so there's my car. Now for the wheels, let's get this right for once. Uh, we need to have object drawing mode turned on for the wheels. And for the wheels, we're using this uh, pre-made one here, but we're also going into window color and it changes off the pre-made one. Uh, radial fill. Okay, let's try go. We just want that pre-made one. So it's changed to that. And for the stroke, I think we're going to have no stroke on it. And this one, we need that uh, pre-made one. But then we were going to go for radial gradient. And we're going to move this black one back a bit. So you have to push down on it, he says, and drag it. I was kind of going to there. All right, so object drawing, we'll just check it is turned on. So let's make a wheel. There's one wheel. We can get on our black arrow tool. So when we click, it's a blue thing and it doesn't go um, cutting things out. So it's got a blue box around. So we can put our first wheel there then just hold down Alt and get our second wheel there. Then we just need to draw a big rectangle around it. Uh, right click convert to symbol and it's going to be the car and it's going to be a movie clip and okay now we can just click all those eyes bring our background back again including down the bottom these two guys and our car's kind of really big which kind of could look okay because it could look really funky. Uh, but what we're going to do is just get on this free transform tool and shrink it down. So it's a more realistic size. So we're starting our car over here off the road. 
All right, then remember what you had to do was uh, actually we've got our car on our train track layer. That's going to be a real problem. So just control Z. And we're on our car layer. So how the heck did we get on our train track layer? I don't know. Must have done something wrong. Okay, car is on the car layer. All right, so now we go insert and create motion tween, which it won't do because you need to be uh, clicked in there first. So we're gonna have to drag this manually to uh, frame 24, that scroller. So just push down on it and drag it. And then it has to be out the other side here. It's made the dotted line for us. If we do control enter, we should have a car driving through the city. There we go, all right? So that's the car animation. You can add the trees, add more buildings and all of that. And a good lesson there, which I did on purpose, of course, uh, to show you guys how you need to have object drawing on or object drawing off, or you get into a real mess. So we just sort of demonstrate that as well. So let's get back to the presentation and wrap this up. Live demo done. And the challenge task is to make a second car or any type of vehicle you want to and have the cars go in opposite directions. Now, if your car is sort of going, not facing the right way around, you can just do modify transform, then flip horizontal while you clicked on the car. So we've just got this kind of um, rainbow bus going this direction and our car going that direction. So they go past each other. So you just have two cars driving in opposite directions, passing each other, uh, and that'll be good for that. Now you can copy and paste library items between projects. So this bus actually was in another project we'd done. So what we do is we just opened up that other project and what we do is we clicked on the bus and up the top edit tab of animate when copy. Then we just went over into our current project, this one here, this one right here, and we made a new layer called bus and then we just did edit tab up the top and did paste and it pasted onto the bus layer for us. All right, so you can copy between projects is something else. But that's enough learning in this lesson. Oh my goodness, it's been a one hour lesson. So remember, uh, give this video a big thumbs up like because you've done a lot of learning here. We've learned the line tool, we've learned the paint bucket tool, we've learned object drawing mode on, object drawing mode off, we've learned how to move things across in a straight line, how to make funky kind of palm trees and 3D windows for buildings and all sorts of things. So a lot of learning, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe, 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 uh, so that you can see the next Animate video, you get notified when it comes out, and you can keep learning about Adobe Animate, and we'll see you in the next lesson.